Good evening. It's seven o'clock. We have a quorum. We call the planning board meeting to order. First up, where is John Mish John Mishkar? Yeah. Next question. I'd like to bring it to the board that we take attendance and attach it to our minutes from here on forth. You know the audience, right? So I'd like to make that in the form of a motion. Okay. For the record. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? I think it's just a nuisance. It's a nuisance to keep track of. It's a nuisance to be sure it gets done. And it just adds the agendas. The minutes are already long enough without having more stuff in there. I think it is just an exercise in futility. <coughs> you can just put that, we can go right here and into the file. Well, I want to I wanna comment on that. Okay. There is no work on your part, Tom Clerk. They fill it out. You just attach it to the minutes. That's it. But this goes down in record. Who's here? I want to go back a month, two months, six months. I look at our agenda and the minutes of the meeting. I want sometimes reference who was there. People say well, I was there. Were you? No, you weren't. Well, that's, that is just not a good reason to well, do it. Well, then don't do it. But there's more than you on this board. Well, maybe you, you would volunteer to do it yourself. It just is to hand this out and ask the people to sign it. Personally, I don't care who's here. It's a <clears throat> public hearing. People are willing, welcome to come or not as they see fit. I care who's here. I disagree with you. I Maybe care. we can postpone this discussion when we have a little bit more time. Maybe right we can postpone years. this about 20 years from now. No, no, at the end of the meeting because there are going to be people waiting okay. in. That's where you get their, you get their names, the beginning of the meeting, not after. I, would, I withdraw my second. Okay, yeah, so we can have a fair exchange of ideas. Okay. All right, we'll discuss at the end of the meeting. Sounds like Good. it. All right. Um, first up for general information is JJ. <coughs> Jamindar and Jim Fitzpatrick. <coughs> yes, sir. Okay. We're, we're proposing, uh, I don't know, can I just talk? Sure. Okay. We're proposing to repaint the building, change the awnings, and change the signage on the building. We were asked by the inspector to come before the board and right. present what we wanted to do. So, what's your position there? Uh, I'm the director of uh, property development for Chile Research Park. I'm based in Dallas. I flew up here for the meeting. So. In Dallas? Yes, sir. What's the uh, street address? 426 Russell Street. Just want to, I, th I think we've already seen what this looked like. I think it went around here, really, correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, we seen that? No, any change in signs, the signage, or awnings? The signage is a newer signage. It's a new branding that we're rolling across the entire Chili's chain across the country. Any change in size of what's there today? Uh, I can tell you what's existing and what's proposed. Great. Okay. Just a little history. I was living in Houston, Texas in 1976, and I went to the first Chili's in Houston. Uh -huh. Thank 42 you. years ago. So, is that a paid political Just a quick comment on that. that this, know, this particular chili is about 22 years old. Other than a paint job or so, nothing has been done to it. So, as part of our national remodeling program, this is one of the early chilies that's going to be touched and okay. addressed. And our signage logos have changed a little bit from what we used to do 20 years ago. That's the reason for the signage change. And the color scheme is also being revised to be a little bit more modern and upscale, as we were talking earlier. So okay. uh, so the existing sign on the front of the building is 45.9 square feet. What is proposed is 37.7, which is a smaller sign. Uh, the sign on the side of the building is currently 58 square feet. We're proposing a 61 square foot size. It's okay. just three square feet bigger, but the front one is about uh, 
seven, eight square feet smaller. So. And you got two signs in that building now? Yes, sir. So, so you're not adding no more signs? We're not adding. We're replacing the front sign with a new sign. We're replacing the side sign with a side sign. Are they externally illuminated signs? No, they're internally illuminated. And so are the existing signs. So internals. Indirect lighting. They're, they're lit from the back side, yes. So this is the existing sign on the building. You can see the front facade. This is lit from the back? Yes, it, yeah, it's back lit. No, not inside the sign? No, so uh, it, 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 shines, it shines through at night, It right? shines through, yeah. The front faces will light up. Okay, that's what I mean. Yes. Yes. So, so it is, it's, it's gone back lit. Right, yeah, so that, that's an existing sign on the side of the building, and this is the one on the front. How are those signs lit today? That's the same way they are. The same way? This, they'll be, but the old ones are probably with neon inside, the new ones, of course, with new technology, with LEDs. They're LED? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I can show you on, you can, you'll see on the renderings themselves that yeah, you have. The, the colors and stuff look fine. So, so this is what you see right. on the new, two new signs. <coughs> you brought that in here before. I think they sent it out in our it was on the web. It was sent to us. It was sent to us in email. Yeah, because we, we talked about it this evening. Yeah. Again, we were not here for the hearing, but right. I was told that I should It's probably in your favor you weren't, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it, it's pretty straightforward. The, the, you can see the old, old building colors and things are very dated and horrible. We're trying to kind of make uh, the colors are nice. I mean, it's a nice, it's it looks nice. It's pleasing. They've left mm -hmm. all the stone and natural brick the same, which is kind of brightening up the building with new. new trying to mo modernize it a little bit. There you go. Yeah, That's yeah, right I like that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, do you have any questions, concerns? You know, I guess because an old them? building and an old grand kind of grandfather in what it used to be, they're not making it any more not more. I'll make a motion to wait for the site plan of approval for the proposed paint and sign changes. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion mm -hmm. passes unanimously. Yes. You're doing a good job, by the way. Yep. Thank you. A good job. So, as the next step, you just contact the. Good deal. You, move, yeah, you can go to the building inspector if he has any questions. You can contact Bill. Okay. And uh, Tim, Tim is away for two weeks. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if he has an alternate. <coughs> and if he gives you a hard time, we'll send our heavy sluggers there. Okay. The chair. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kozenzi. Hi. Um, so we were in last time and we discussed um, updating the front of our Nissan. Yes. So I brought. You wanted to see um, drawings, what it currently looked like, and what we're proposing it looks like. So we put those on the same piece of paper for you, and then there's colored copies and short one. Um, I'm sorry. Well, maybe we're going to be short for a vote then. Let's hope not. Well, you got five members. Well, this is. I apologize. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so, as you can see on the top piece of paper, that's what Country Nissan currently um, looks like. And on the bottom is what we're proposing. And on the second and third piece of paper, you can just see better the design elements that they want to use and the materials. What's before and what's after? Anything here? No. These are all after. Yeah, this is, this the, is, this is existing. So I don't, I don't have the second but piece of paper here. I'm sorry, it's the third copy. Okay, we can share it here. Things are really getting rough. Where is the old that uh, we're going to look at the old? That is the old. This is the old? Both both front page, both of the old, right? No, the bottom yeah. is the new. The bottom, the bottom is the new, the new. top is the old. Which, oh. Why is it in color? Because these are in color. This is this. Which one is the old one? Tell me. This is the old. Top sheet, top picture. That's old. What's that showing? It just shows you the exact a sketch of what's there. There's no color. This everything here is new. Correct? Correct. The next two pages. Not changing the, the size of the 
structure. You're just changing right. the class. It's, it's literally just, yeah. And we're eliminating that one uh, element on the side. You'll see that. Uh, the old, the old, the old uh, Saturn element. Launch. Correct. We're just shrinking back the awning and, and lobbing it off at the top. And then the other side, on the right side of the building, we're boxing it in. We're not eliminating. We're just boxing this, it in. This is the old Saturn launch right here in front on the side. That's being removed. Oh, you mean all that structure? That that little that this I'm trying to about the, the thing that's on the side of the building for Saturday is the base of all the before they launch the news car and stuff when they come in and they're like a little celebration or selling your car. There's like a little breezeway? Yeah. Porch. I don't know what you want to call it. Delivery bag. That is being taken off. Okay. That is being removed entirely? No, we're nope. just boxing it in and, and siding around. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, so that's actually that's actually the launch here on right. the side. Correct. Okay, this is the old one. So you can see it above the place from siding. But then they're taking this one off of this side too. Right. The the front, they're they're taking this this front that's the front. The front entryway yeah. is being pulled back and that upper membrane is being cut down with the front line of that awning that okay. you see there. So these are removed here, right? Yes. Yeah, that, that they said that they're it, it being reduced in That's size. That's just what that is, just an overhang. Isn't Correct. It? It's just an overhang. Correct. Yeah. So that the is, this new entrance here is going to look like this. Is that mm -hmm. what that is? Yeah. No. Yes. N technically, no. So, no. so what is this? So this is just a, this is, I mean, this is, you know, they can, this could be attached to the building. Well, but, not the sign. What, 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 this, I, I, what, what is this, care. what is this picture showing us? Are we going to see I, this on the building? No, not this. Yeah, just that element. Sorry. So this, really this yeah, Nissan no, element no. here, the sign here will be above here. The only thing that we're doing is eliminate cutting this here, cutting this <coughs> here, and shrinking the awning back. As you can see here, it's just been brought back. We're not changing the footprint at all. So this this is exactly what it would look like. So I, I guess I'm confused. No, no, no we want to see. Okay. This is exactly what the front of the building would look like. These are the materials. So this what, what was what just, what it's, showing. it's just showing you the silver metal and the top oh, piece. Okay. Like, it's I'll just be, literally be, just okay. showing okay. you the materials. Does this look like anything like this? Okay. No. no. Okay, so we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got two pages here that we're you not going to see. You know, you're talking 100 miles an hour here, yeah, but you'll see and he there. can't follow you, okay. and neither can I. Okay. okay. You no, need no, to come no, in here. No, no offense. What's yeah. going on last week? You need to come back to us. What were they doing? Were they calling rendering of this? Yeah. And what was, and what okay. is. Okay, just a, a picture mm -hmm. of what you have today, and a column rendering of what it's going to look like, because you've got pictures here. Well, you're not going to have this, you're going to have this, you're going to have this. It's like, well, this is. I, I understand what you're saying. You want to see yeah. what you're going to build. You're going to play yeah. any okay. and then board. we're going to hold you to that. Yep. We're, we're not against what you yep. want to build. We just want to see what you're going to build in color so that, okay, that's what we're going to have. Okay. And, and I want to see what's in color, what, what's there now that you're changing. So, so a, a photo of the simple photo of your building would be fine. Correct. Perfect. So we Correct. didn't do that because last time we were here, you just wanted to see the material and you wanted to then discuss if you were going to allow us to use that material before we had the architect finish the rendering. Okay. So we were okay. just bringing the pictures to show okay. you the material. All right. And so, so we got some marching orders. Our, our, our chairman may have spoke for him, have been speaking for himself. I'm not sure that you know, this is in the village center overlay district. Right. Um, and your pre-existing structure obviously would not have, I should say obviously, your pre-existing, your current structure would not have been allowed under the current regulations in that district. Right. This doesn't increase the structure, but it makes it even shinier. Huh? Right. And we're trying to uh, go for traditional materials. Right, that's why we brought you the photos, because right. last time we were here we talked about it and you wanted to see what Nissan wanted to see on the front okay. of the building. Okay. So we brought you just the design of the front okay. and didn't have the architect use the materials okay. until we brought you photos of the materials that Nissan wants us to use. Okay, so now let's talk about the materials Nissan wants you to use. Right, because um, there's no point of us having the architect right. 
go back, and we also talked about trying to stagger it. So, um, did I send you the design guidelines for the, or did you ask for the design guidelines for the Village Center Overlay District? I have that. I don't know if they've been updated. No, probably, no they haven't. Okay. They, they were adopted a couple of years ago, and if you, I would have sent them to you if you had asked me for I them. I think I have them. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Just so we're sure we're on the same page, why don't yes. we do this? Yeah. Uh, send me an email, okay. planning at fmma.org, mm -hmm. and just all you have to do is put design, uh, village center overlay, design guidelines, or you can just design guidelines in the subject line. I will know what you're talking about. Okay. I will send you our current version, just so we are sure yes. if they're on the same page. Yes. What other thing, though, they've got a truck out there with a big oil change special sign on there. Uh, kind of tacky. I think. Where? That was the truck parked out there. The truck that's parked out there saying oil change mm -hmm. special. Well, that's our parts delivery truck. But it's it's an advertisement, isn't it? Well, they deliver parts in it. But it's parked. So, so it's why only is it parked? parked when they're not delivering. Why is it parked up front with well, oil change? When they're not delivering parts. If it's registered, you can't stop that. So it's not part of your. Well, I'm sure it's an advertisement, isn't it? Isn't it signage? Well, I, I guess I guess I'm. I don't know if you would consider it signage. I just think it's, it's a kind of tacky. Truck. We're talking about this so the district. It's like something you'd see on telephone road. Well, it says that's a separate, separate thing. Okay. Is the truck separate. registered? It has it has you know our parts plate on it. A parts dealer plate. What we deliver? Yes. So it's not registered. Let's. Well, let's stay on this. Yeah, but, but, but let's stay and stick with the, the building okay. that we want to see. This is way too much drama here today for me. Okay. So, so you want, I'm just, let me just go back because I, yes. you want the subject of the email to say. Just, just say um, design guidelines or something like that. Okay, got it. Um, I promise, if I know it's from you, I'll know what you want. Okay. Well, I'm glad you do because I got it. Okay. What we did was we brought you back with it the last meeting you guys wanted to see. Okay, so, so these, that's exactly what, you, what we talked this, about. And this is last all meeting. flat metal facade. Yes, it is. Yeah, okay, so these are like the tear sheets you get out yes. of uh, the lighting catalog or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. So okay. they actually come out of this is Nissan's actual book, okay. and so I just wanted to give you a sample of what. So every dealership looks a little bit different. So that's why you're saying, oh, that doesn't match exactly or whatnot, because okay. not all of them will be exactly the same. But you wanted to see a sample of what the materials would look like. So that's my best way to show you. Does, does Nissan have any dealerships in this historical district in town? If they don't, they're going to have to adjust what's in that catalog. Sure, but that's yeah. why I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right? So the so catalogs are relevant to what we're talking about. Does it fit our guidelines is the question. But you asked me to That's bring okay. in. We, we, yeah. we asked for this. Yes, we wanted to see what... What, what I was requesting, and right, then yeah. we were going to go back okay. and forth on how to come as close to what being acceptable for Nissan yes. and still being acceptable for the town. Right. Now, now, as a dealer, we're stuck between the town and Nissan, and Nissan is pretty stern on what they want their dealerships to look like. Okay. Well, Nissan doesn't run this town. No, and, 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 and she understands. She's we know to, you guys run the town. We've she's, been she's, we've she's, been to these town meetings before. We understand. This is not a town meeting. This is she, trying to meet. She's trying to trying to work with us. Right. Okay. Everybody play nice and be nice. So what I will also do, in addition, just so everyone's on the same page, and just so you don't have to dig it out from wherever you have filed it, um, I will send everybody a copy of the Village Center Overlay Design Guidelines. So we'll all have the same thing to work with. Everybody's on the same page. Okay. Now, is, is there any new signage on your building? Is it just the same signage? It will be the same signage. Okay. We're not adding nothing no. else in what's okay. there now. Absolutely. So it's a matter of getting the facade to meet the Village Center Guidelines design. Okay. Yeah, the plain flat metal um, 
the color by itself is not out of line with the, with the color scheme, if you will. It's the appearance that's probably out of sync. Right. We and we we expected that. And okay. what we did with our sign, because our sign out front is made of the same exact material that the building that they want the building to be made of. You had us almost. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure how they did it, but you had us like flatten it so it wasn't shiny anymore. Right. They almost. Um, they put like a coating over it, so it it wasn't that. You know, it didn't. Um, reflect. Yeah, reflect anymore. So we would be willing to bring that back to Nissan. I guess we just need something to go back to Nissan with that. I'm okay. What the. I believe what we like to see somehow is the flat facade is not by itself. It's going to look like some kind of a, I want to call it a, a, a siding, mm -hmm. or at least a texture is more maybe a better way to say. Right. I don't I don't know what's available for this. You know, we're not designers here. We're kind of telling you what we want to see, and it's up to you to probably to do the research and come up with something of what is possible. This isn't Tokyo, Japan. It's not the Massachusetts. So, you know, is there a way to put some kind of a texture? I'm sure. Yeah, okay. and, and we would look into that, and I'm, I'm sure we could. We texturized the sign out front, and you guys were happy with how that came out, and it's the same material. So I'm sure we can figure out how to do that okay. again. So is there a Nissan dealership somewhere? relatively nearby that has been upgraded? Um, yes, there is. Um, there's Curry Nissan in Chicopee, there's Belize Nissan in West Springfield, and they are both exactly like yes, they what are. you see in the book. The shiny I, side I personally the like what you got here, but I certainly want to see what's there. I understand. That's all. In color, yeah. not black and white. No, I, we didn't do that because we didn't know if you were going to agree. Okay, understand. I'm okay. on that color. But i like to see Material. before and after that. Okay. 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 Understand. Easy enough. Yeah. And it's not like we don't like what you're proposing. Don't take it that way. Okay. Okay. So we don't mean to be facetious, if you would, or mean. We're, we're trying, we, we've got to come, you, and you need to comply with the village overlay district that the town has adopted. And we have reasonable leeway in that because there is quite a bit of variation in what you can propose. And other um, corporations have managed to somehow come close. And yeah, you know, you're not going to collaborate site enough. We, we, we understand that. But what can be done to make it, more, like Bill says, less shiny, less reflective, more something with a texture to it? Um, uh, you know, even texture, I mean, not that you're going to do it, but there's a lot of there's several companies that have put up textured block, okay. textured cinder block. Okay. Um, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Whether you know, a rough surface, something that's looks like in some way even a brick facade. There, there's a whole bunch of things you can call. Um, well, you really you, you really can't get opinions one of us at a time. You really have to come back to me to get our to get our joint opinion on that. Yeah. Okay. But if, you know, maybe there's. A, few, a number of choices. You could come in. Well, you know, talk to. I don't. I don't know who comes first, Nissan or us here, of what what could be done. Yeah, I mean, so well, ideally, what we'd like to do is we wanted to come and get feedback today after okay. showing you what what Nissan wants to see. So we're hoping that you like the design, and then we wanted feedback on the material. Okay. And we'll go back to the drawing board now with the material and try to make it texturized and less shiny. If you're okay with how it's staggered and the color and the design. Yeah. In my opinion, I like everything that you got here, but that's all I want to see. Okay. What's there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are you making drastic in change? I like improvements. I like updating. I like all that. Mm -hmm. But I want to see what's there and where you're going. Yeah, so I apologize for not having a picture. It's beige stucco right now, but it's almost the same layering and, and pattern that's, that's in this photo. Yeah. But we understand most corporations, after some year, all of their subsidies, if you would, for lack of any other term, they want to update it to be more uniform and it's you know, re 
rebranding, whatever you want to call it. You know, Chile was just standing there changing, and you know, that's just one example. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately for you, they're completely out of the village of like this, so they have a whole different story they can deal with. But it is what it is. And, um, okay. So, so besides that, everything looks good, and we'll bring you back new a new material that we'll use on the yeah, carpet, I mean, and we'll it's bring a, you back It's a flat roof. You're, we're not going to ask you to, to, to put in the rest of the stuff, but we're really looking at what does the outside look like? Is there some way you can make it look? I mean, it's going to be tough to make it look colonial. We understand that. But can you at least make it look, like I said, some kind of a texture? You know, other, other board members can speak about it. Are the lines okay? The size of the blocks, the lines, as long as those panels change in texture? Would that be? I don't really have a problem with the size of the blocks. Um, like I said, I think when you were here last time, you could like, you know, put re one in, like, re you know, like stagger them over to the front of the facade, you know, but let, let's see what texturing might look like. Okay. And, or, or something like that. You know, what, what are the options you can come up with? Mm -hmm. All right, like I said, we're trying to design it for you, just giving okay. you ideas. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully with that and the Village Overlay, the Village Overlay District really gets into some detail that's really about mostly new, smaller buildings. So you can kind of read through it and say, well, that obviously doesn't apply, but maybe this might. It talks about a whole bunch of things. Okay. How long has that dealership been there? Since 2007. So the structure has been there much longer. Yeah, yes. we've yeah. been there since 2007 as Country mm -hmm. Nissan. That's been there. It was the actually it was Subaru. The Subaru. Yeah. It was how, Subaru. How, Saturday, how it was Subaru. It was Subaru. Actually, business is great. Okay. My stand on business is what we can do to make business prosper and make it good. But we need to see the whole picture. Absolutely. I respect that and understand that. Apologies. Do you kind of get a ballpark what we're looking for? I do. Okay. I do. I will go back and we'll be at your next meeting. Okay. With I'm curious, do you think the size of the sign that you have out front would increase or decrease your business? Do I think? Yeah. I yeah. think we're well established on that street now. So it doesn't matter. So I don't think so. Thank you. So you're going to put up a two-square-foot sign. But I, I hope you don't reduce your sign. No. And we, no. I'm right. Our sign out front? No. All your signs. No. Oh, good. That makes me happy. No, we're These guys, a lot of them, they just want to go back on the way. No, but the, our sign is amazing. <laughs> so that sign on the road is not changing it. John, we have no authority to regulate the size of the sign. It's the town meeting that does it. We've That's tried a to good make thing. Bigger. That's a good but thing for all businesses. Okay. 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 Uh, so the town meeting dictates the size of the sign. Right. Okay. We're good? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Good See you okay. next time. Dan, Esther. Thank you. Good luck. I guess. Hi. I'm back from the February 6th meeting. You had, uh, this is for the having on farm how far so redevelopment. Again, as a reminder, we were here um, in 2016 for the parcel development at the last meeting. Yes, sir. Uh, 2 6. Uh, we had looked at the plans. You had uh, stated that this looked minor. And modification and require reopening of the permit, but I requested a few things additional, which were providing the parking towns to be all the plans, which are what's currently existing today, what was previously permitted in 2016, and then what we're currently proposing today in 2018. So you can see the <coughs> entire parking towns on all three of those plans. Uh, the second was you requested us to show you the previously permitted renderings, which you'll see on page five uh, from 2016. And then we um, showed you our proposed renderings for the two buildings as, as they currently stand. And then lastly, asked for a revised TDR calculation, uh, which is- This is what you proposed first? That's what we proposed in 2016, yes. And what are you proposing, six? Uh, six and seven, yep. So we're showing the two buildings uh, next to each other. Is the difference in square footage of the buildings is for about approximately 4,000 square feet. From Small? Larger. The new one? Yes. So we went from two buildings that were just over 10,000 square feet to two buildings. One is just over 10,000 square feet and the other one is uh, 14,000 square feet. 
So what are you looking for? You're looking for us to resolve and give you the go ahead now or, or uh, Correct. so our decision is should we hold a more comprehensive meeting and have you go over it and really detail out the parking and does that influence some of the other infants egresses? Correct. So at 2016, we provided a comprehensive traffic study yeah. uh, that analyzed all of our internal roadways as well as the impact on South Maple Street. Uh, in 2016, we did propose modification of South Maple Street, which was, uh, as a reminder, was reviewed by our engineer and by Hadley's um, requested traffic engineer, which is also in the this is the current layout right here of the site of the building? Correct. Yes. I'll tell you, I like the first one better than what you were supposed to run. So the... It's a lot more attractive. So the proposed two buildings, um, I can't state yet who the uh, retailers are right now. I was hoping to be able to share that with you guys tonight. Uh, but the uh, 14,000 square foot building is a uh, single tenant user. Uh, so what we've done is try to accommodate their is this uh, their shop. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Go ahead, you're pointing. Keep pointing. Uh, so that building that you're pointing to, Mr. Chairman, that's a single tenant building uh, in response to a tenant's prototype architecture. And then the second building, which is 10,000 square feet, is uh, landlord-driven architecture, uh, very neutral in palette and our efforts to respond to the single tenant building. Um, and it, this will allow us, obviously, what you have in front of you says tenant, tenant, tenant across in plain white type. But what this really allows us to do is have the landmark architecture sit this is so in the background. Yeah, this is very Stalinist. The parking number is increased or the same? Uh, it's uh, increased from what's existing today, slightly decreased from what was previously proposed. Like six spaces. So difference. you have bigger building and less parking. Correct. We're still at about five parking spaces per thousand square feet, which is uh, most retailers typically look for four spaces per thousand square feet. This one looks to me like it's pretty attractive. I agree. So I can address the previous rendering if you'd like. Okay. Um, so the previous rendering, obviously, it, it worked much, it worked better for us in 2016. Obviously, retail trends had changed slightly, not just in the cities, but also in the suburban market, rural market, uh, where we are trying to provide more of a, um, a bolder, more modern architecture for our landlord-driven architecture, um, placing more emphasis on that, which incurs more costs on the landlord. Uh, due to the nature of the retail market. So we're trying to have this minimal uh, landlord or tenant investment on these uh, on these buildings. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, I, I don't like that at all. I, I really like this. Yep. I think it's attractive. Mm -hmm. I think it's a plus for the area. Yep. And this looks like just square boxes dumped over there. Mm -hmm. The, I just, I really, I just don't like it. Okay. The shape of, of the like, buildings I really are, like this. I are, think this are fairly good. similar, or the second building anyway. The first one, obviously the location of it has changed slightly in the shape of it, um, and that's in response to site constraints as we are, as we sit today. I don't think it's, is the shape that's what you did, that's it really, John, is the second John, it's mm -hmm. this, you know, the roof line, the whole thing, I just... If I was building that, I would have the, uh, So egress onto South Maple Street is the same. Yeah, that's... It's There's no change same. here. There was a uh, question with Kentucky Fried Chicken. They were Correct. filing a suit against you. Uh, has this changed or not changed? Nothing has changed with uh, KFC. And my knowledge, no suit. Okay, so, so this is going to be the same. Correct. Um, yep. Same buildings are affected in this plan as were previously permitted. That's just. Is this slightly. going to be independently owned still? The uh, I. Yep. So it's like, under um, WS Development's ownership. That building is leased out to the two tenants or retailers that occupy it, which are Vision Showcase 
So you're not going to upgrade that and make it look conforming to these? As of right now, no. The tenants have control of that building, so we're at. Um, you can, not you could make a deal and make it look yeah. consistent. Yeah, it's, di um, it's difficult right now with the corner that that is located in to make any. These buildings will all be owned by WS, right? Correct. All these are owned by WS. So the. Uh, Parking dumpsters and all of that is going to be in the back? Correct. Very similar to what we're uh, It doesn't show any of that. Yeah. Jim, I, I'm inclined to say we may need a little bit more time to go over this. I mean, to you, to look for an approval and give a go-ahead, it's it's not just a minor change. Well, part of the problem is it's 4,000 square feet bigger. Yes. Which is in excess of the 10%. And parking has changed. I'm assuming, well, we've made a property will change. But the parking is, the, 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 the parking has changed. The, the building is certainly larger. It's not something that we're allowed to waive under site plan approval. It's over 10%. When I was here on the 6th, it didn't seem like we were heading in this direction, like this was minor in nature. I'm just, if it's, well, required additional so information. That's what happens when you come in quickly like this and say, approve it. I mean, yeah. certainly this is something that has changed a little bit more dramatically. And okay. that's why I think we need a little bit more time to review it. Okay. So it, it, there is a middle ground between yeah. giving you a waiver tonight and I don't know if we would necessarily have to re-notice the public hearing, no. but perhaps just reopen the prior public hearing, and you know, this is more a, a this is an amendment. No, uh, I, I that's I don't disagree with that. Okay. So um, we'll yeah, I think we just want to have a little, um, you know, maybe a letter from either the, the original site engineer or the peer review engineer, mm -hmm. just confirming that we're doing another project where you have a letter saying that, uh, okay. yeah, there are some changes, but they don't affect our calculations. Okay. Um, but that's the kind of thing, yeah, I think we probably want to put it on an agenda and just have, uh, I'm sure you have these blown up. Or how, yeah, how difficult would it be to bring bigger drawings we got six or seven here, and I keep yep. flipping through. He's talking about this, yep. and you, nobody's on the same yep. quote unquote page. Yep. If you could put them up yep. there and go through logically and show us what you're sure. doing, it'd be much easier. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I know you guys had asked for additional information of all the plans that are a little yeah. confusing. There's bigger drawings up there, TV audience, if there's any, to see what's going on, and we could fall a little more logically about what you're proposing. Sure, I can do that for, for nice. the public. This is kind of the problem you had with Nissan earlier. What are you talking about? Problem. What are you expecting is a target date to start construction? Do um, you guys have a target date? Uh, not right now. I have to go back and look at my schedule. I can probably give you that information. Okay. Because you've got three years from the date of approval for the fact that just that the state changed their calendar, for lack of a better term. It yep. used to be a two-year yep. window. Now it's a three-year okay. window. We adopted that last year, so that's okay. okay. Um, but be aware. Yep. If you don't start construction within three years of the date of approval, yep. ask for an extension. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. Yeah, I was not aware it was three years. Ask uh, Mr. Yeah, we, we just a while ago, but recently modified that. Yeah. We're we have a, a target delivery date for the single tenant in um, middle of 2019, so we'll be starting construction in advance of that to be able to modify. Yeah, the but three years is up this year. Three years, uh, you, you were, February you were, 2019. You were approved. Oh, you were approved in 2016? Yes. Okay, 2016. so you're going to learn in 2019. Yeah, we'll be, okay. the goal is to be able to break But time goes by quickly. This year, this, 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 the goal is to break around when? This year. This year. Yeah. Okay. So, do we have, I don't have my camera. Do we have anything for the yeah, at the second March meeting? Perfect. Oh. PVPC, we're moving. Oh, through. that's right. I, you, you said you're going to be back in two weeks. I could be back on the sixth. I have That'd uh, be great. engineer drawings that I can get. Are okay. you looking for? Um, I can bring my engineer with me. Okay. Uh, civil. Would you like a? You had mentioned a letter from the peer review. We had a peer review traffic engineer and a peer review civil engineer. Not the traffic. Just the just civil. just just a peer review. Sure. 
for the, like Bill said, for the drainage. Okay. The site. There's just like okay. a site. Well, the, uh, everything else, all your mechanicals, are basically the same as that first proposal? Yes. Very similar. The site has changed to respond to this unit building. I still don't like the look of it. Okay. Is there anything, any no. comments regarding the architecture that we can address in advance? Well, I, I really like what you guys proposed before. Okay. It looked good before. Okay. I voted for that. Sure. I s compared, it's like to me, night yeah. and day. So, this uh, we're, we can look to respond to those comments for the second building, which is the gray, grayish looking building. Uh, the, f the one way on this end? Yeah, the, f the first building, this is, um, I can't speak for our retailer right now, and I hope to have more direction from them. That's uh, this. Yes, it, that's it, the is, it, 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 This design mm -hmm. yeah. is indicative of the tenant itself. Correct. That's, that's what they like. Yes, and we've tried to uh, mold them into something that we think that you'll like. We've had countless discussions going back and forth, and I feel like We've landed in a pretty good place. We like the how this has come out, um, but we're happy to respond to building I, I to the, the ten thousand square foot building. The uh, I mean, the wood and the stone. I think myself. Yeah. I think it looks nice. I think yeah. what kind of stands out is the greens. Yeah. I don't. That can be toned out at all. Okay. Um, let me find in the quote, actual photos of what that looks like. So. You can see you, you what that looks like. Toned down. It, it, it looks like blockhouses <laughs> block house. It's a corner of the board. Yeah, there's, there is texture within it. There's, it's not just one solid piece that has it's <laughs> an type of material. So I can okay. I can provide an actual photo of that. Okay, so that might be good. Sure, I can do that. Is there anything other uh, for a roof design? Is just this flat roof? Um, typically flat roofs in retail. Um, and that allows us to put all our mechanical units on the roof. Um, but even if, you know, if the front was yeah. somehow different. Okay. I mean, this is right on the side of Route 9. Yeah. You know, if it was way back, that, that's another story. But this is right like the showcase. We had, we had a pretty flat roof the first <coughs> round in 16 mm -hmm. um, as well. just want to make sure I'm respond to your guys' architecture comments correctly for specific. You know, this one, the one you've got here, you mm -hmm. got step up, step down. Yeah, well, we could have full roofs, right? Yeah, yeah just, yeah. yeah. The, uh, you think that what you said about that green gym, just that sticks out like a sort of thumb right there. Let me get some photos for you. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, can, and maybe that'll help you guys, yeah. Instead of it just looking like a solid green okay. block. Okay. So does, it, does a tenant require refrigeration? I don't think so. Yeah, another perishable, huh? No, not for those guys. <laughs> any other, any other in question? You tried to coin room link? <laughs> you know, you know, Denver Rio Grande, Western Railroad, I think Rex Dry, Phil Anshin was over, he said, if you got to feed it, keep it warm, or peas, we don't want it. Is, is the sign going to start from A to M? <laughs> Uh, so, so what do you get a mark for coming back here? The uh, six. Yes, me. So the six, I'll bring you um, engineered plans, uh, site plans, work building plans, elevations, uh, a modified building two that responds better to the first uh, iteration of architecture. <coughs> photos of the green material and a letter from the security engineer yeah. work in response to the green. And calculations for Yeah, I've seen your calculations in the back, but I'll bring okay. yeah, right, we, we'll, we'll set aside more time. Sure. For okay. Okay. Thank you, John. Very good. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Um, just a quickie. Um, the, yeah, I keep these. Uh, I'll keep one set. I'll keep one set. I think they want to keep one. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm going to keep one extra set. No. I got one set. Oh, you got one set. Okay. okay. We're good. I'll take this one. You can have the money. You can have the price. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Um, the select, we are not designated special town employees. The select we have it on their agenda uh, tomorrow to vote to make the planning board special town employees. 
but they would like a motion from us that we are requesting it. So I said, we'll do that tonight. So I'm, just, I'm entertaining a motion to make the planning board special town I'll, I'll make that motion. Second. Second. What advantage? Right? What advantage and what disadvantage? There's no disadvantage. What's the advantage? The advantage is it exempts us for a few categories of the so I looked through it a little bit. At the current, <coughs> the current state ethics rules say that if you are on a board, you may not appear in front of any other board in the community on behalf of anyone else. Uh, for the special employee, you, which is mainly applicable to small towns where there are all sorts of overlapping issues, Special employee can appear in front of other boards, just can't appear in front of their own board. So you can work for another board, you can, um, for right, right now, for example, I cannot take a tax abatement application to the assessor's office on behalf of a client because I am on this board and therefore cannot practice in front of any other boards in the town. If we go for special, uh, I would be able to represent a client in front of the select board or the uh, or the assessors. I just couldn't come in here. I'll support second motion. Motion a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. On to the continuation of the uh, public hearings. First up, we will take the continuation of the definitive subdivision approval of basically colony estates. Colony estates, yes. I'm not participating in the vote. Put your notes. Yeah. Okay. Right, thank you. That's what we're waiting for. Yes. The real sticking point to continue tonight was the description of the drive, colony drive, so that in the future, um, just for everybody's experience, no, I mean, explanation, that uh, there are several roads in town, subdivisions, that were built. And the building lots were built out and the original developer moved out, parts unknown. And they took the description of the road with them, so actually they still own the road. The residents on the street don't own the road, and trying to get that road accepted by the town is an absolute nightmare. Under our new subdivision regs, we require a description of the road up front tonight before we approve. That way, down the time frame, in case the developer does disappear, and they're not disappearing on purpose, it's just that while they, they sold the lots, they don't care, they, they deliberately do not care about the street anymore, and so it kind of falls into limbo. Who maintains it? Well, the town doesn't really own it, so they have no responsibility to maintain it, but the people on it are paying taxes. So in case these developers disappear, at least we have a description and we can go forward and it makes it much easier to have the town basically take it and without getting a surveyor and everything else involved, which is expensive, this is a, the description of the road, we can just get it accepted a little bit more, a little more than that if the developer disappears. Most developers hang around, they do want the town to take over the road because they don't want to maintain it, but this is just covering all the bases in the future, so at least we have that covered. So how do we know that this is in fact a true description? There's no seal on it or is it filed in the courthouse? Or? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. Just a piece of paper with a description on it. 
Is there any map or anything that follows this? Yeah. Yes, there's, right a, there. There, there's a definitive subdivision plan that will be stamped and sealed by a, a registered surveyor that gets recorded at the registry. Mm -hmm. yeah. This description will match that? Yes, that matches the right of way description. <coughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, just, uh, I guess for the record, my name is Philippe Crable from Arnold Beck Associates. Here tonight is uh, Mr. Chris Carney, also from Arnold Beck Associates. We're here with the, the applicant, Mr. Peter Gelinas, uh, the chair. Um, did a good description of, of uh, what we're here for tonight. Uh, we were before the board at a previous meeting. We did a pretty thorough explanation of the subdivision and the proposed eight lots that, are, that will be off of Shattuck Road. Um, we've gone through an extensive peer review process with, uh, with the uh, Doucette Associates as a peer reviewer. We have addressed all their comments, just as a, as a small recap here. Um, and uh, the two things that came out of the last meeting, one was the, the, um, the, right of, the description of the right of way uh, for the meets, uh, of a meet and balance description. And then it would, it, would, uh, it would just be a little bit of clarification, I guess, in regards to the long-term operation and maintenance of the stormwater management system here. At the previous meeting, we were kind of, um, we were kind of discussing whether or not the homeowner association, a homeowner association was going to be established and, and whether they would uh, be part of the maintenance of the stormwater system. Uh, but after some discussions with, with uh, the applicant, uh, we feel that it's in the best, uh, I guess, the best uh, priority for the stormwater system that the town would, would, once the development and the roadway has been finalized, top coat, everything sealed, the stormwater is functioning as it should, the town would take over the maintenance of it once the road is accepted by the town. What kind of stormwater system is it again then? So. <coughs> Just to uh, to explain here, the road is, uh, is is pretty. It's a pretty flat road. There's a high point at about this location here. There's a, two sets of catch basins at the at the entrance at the throat of the site. Those get connected to a surface infiltration basin adjacent to the roadway here. From that high point, it goes down to a low point right here. The, this low point collects the runoff from the roadway from this high point. And then also the from the rear of the of the cul-de-sac comes to here. Uh, these out these inlets, these catch basins are directed to a water quality unit, which is then discharged to a subsurface stormwater system here. Now this so, this system has been sized uh, to um, to capture and attenuate up to the 100-year storm event, which is associated to a 6.4 6 inch rainfall event in 24 hours. So if there, so say we get a 100-year storm event all the water will be contained within this system. Similar, this front basin has been designed the same way. So at 6.4 inches of rainfall, um, the water gets detained by that front basin there. Um, and that, that's, that's essentially it. That there, there's, there's, you know, there's a high point in the roadway, two catch basins at the front with this front basin, two catch basins here with a subsurface basin. Have you the right change? Side reviewed that requirement with the DPW director? Yes, Chris has, has had some discussions uh, with the DPW director. He had mentioned he's fairly new and didn't offer an opinion on maintenance of this. The what? He did yeah. not offer an opinion on taking care of it. No. We um, did, will did not you? speak for the DP. I will not personally speak for the DPW director unless they agree to take care of it. We can't say the town will take care of this. That would be, right. that's out of our jurisdiction. Okay, if the DPW director needs to say yes, the town will agree to take care of that. How deep is that uh, detention pond going to be? The one at the cul-de-sac? This one here? Yes. Uh, it's, I mean, the, the bottom of that, the bottom of the chambers are probably about seven feet. Seven feet, okay. So seven feet. Is that all underground? It, this, that's the bottom, it's not the top, so, so it'll go up. Oh, okay. okay. Um, is that all subsurface? It is, it is all subsurface. Yeah. So on top, everything's flat. What's required right. to maintain it? Right. So there's the two, it's, it's pretty standard operation and maintenance of it. So they're the same, I guess, um, machinery that you would use to maintain the catch basins, you can maintain the water quality in it. But isn't that underground? It's What's that, a vector truck? A vector truck that has a, like a suction hose right. that, that just sucks out all the sediment that's collected in, in those structures. So 
when doing? that system takes takes the stuff in there, there's there's manholes that collect separate all the dirt from Correct. the water. Yes. And so that's where they're gonna suck all that out. Right. So so you know as as we as we design these things, there's a treatment train associated to the the, the whole system here. So the first the first line of, of you know treatment is the, the catch basins. Those have a deep sump that the water comes in, has a place to, you know, initially has a place for the heavy sediment to settle out right there in the catch basin. Then the, the, the water on top skims off, goes into the pipe, then it goes to a, what we call a proprietary sedimentation device. In this case, it's a CDS unit. It's um, one of these units that has a swirling action and, and, has, and it settles out in the chamber at the bottom of that unit. Water, as that unit fills up, it overflows and then it goes into the subsurface system. Now this uh, subsur subsurface system that we've designed has what's called an um, isolator row. So it's just a redundant treatment practice that not all subsurface systems utilize, but I, I, I really like it because it's, it, it's just another level of treatment before water actually makes it into the, the chambers there. Is there any uh, oil separators throughout the system if, say, if there was a yeah. massive oil, oil leak or yep. oil spill? Is yep. there any provisions that it would catch that? Yep. So initially, the catch basins will have hoods on them. So it's a sort of a snout that goes under the water. So oil on floating on water that gets into the, the catch basin will sit on the surface and water will have to go up and under the snout to, to get out of the pipe. Like discharge out? Yep, and then, the, then further, the CDS unit on the other end is also um, will catch any additional hydrocarbons. The subsurface drain, is that a series of pipes? It's the prefabricated plastic chambers. They're, they're like arches. Yes. And this, this, this particular model is a, uh, it's a called the Storm Tech, and, and it's, just, it's just a plastic molded arch. About 30. Uh, these this this specific model is 30 inches tall. You got six inches of stone on the bottom. You got 30 inches of, of, of an arch, and then you got six inches of stone on the top. And that okay. kind of gets wrapped in a filter fabric. Okay. So you have got this kind of pocket. Of, okay. So there's no the actual. Like some of them actually have an underground pipe that just like <laughs> looks like a giant leach field. That's not what this is. That's n it's similar to what you would think a leach field is because leach field has pipes that have perforations right. in it. This is just an open chamber resting on top of stone. Do you have a complete design of that system? We do, yes. Analyze Before I vote analyze. for that, I want to see if a DPW director approves that for future maintenance. Sure. Well, so... If he has no yeah. problem with it, yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Right. So the, most of the maintenance is going to come in the two catch basins and the, the, the water quality unit. That's where all the sediment's going to be caught, mm -hmm. captured, and, and build up. So, so you clean those structures. Essentially, the, the, the subsurface system itself doesn't have any maintenance associated with it, other than the isolated row. But the actual system itself doesn't, it's, it's all on the ground. You can't, you know, it's, it, you couldn't get in there to, to maintain it. it. The idea is to capture all the sediment upstream of it before it gets there. And that's why we have. But if you guys are asking us to accept something that the town has to maintain, right. and that falls on the jurisdiction of the DPW, right. then by all means, he needs to sign off before we even vote yeah. for this. Yeah. I have no problem with sucking out the the, the catch base. I mean, that's a standard practice yeah. all over the town. Yeah. That's that's not the issue. Yeah. It's the the other issue. It's, it's yeah, the long term main for us, the system up there that yep. we yep. want to make sure that he's okay. Okay. Sure. okay. So, so it'll just be the maintenance of it, right? So making sure that the DPW right. is, is comfortable. That's then he sees the uh, print and signs off it. That right. yep. it's yes. going to be fine. And we have sent him the, the the design and and, and mm -hmm. all that. I mean, and yeah, he has he hasn't made no comment on it to you guys. Yeah, I, I, he, I, I, he called me his specialties now in stormwater and. Fairly new employee here. He's only been here about a year. He's not into stormwater. Uh, well, that's nice that expert. Well, that's why that we went through a peer review process. So we went through Doucette, who analyzed our calculations and, and everything that was required to be submitted, and so we address all their comments. Um, so, so I'm confident that the you know the, the design of the system is there. It's it's just you know get, getting him. I, I, I agree. I have I have no. 
issue with the design of the system. I have no issue with everything, but does he agree to the long-term maintenance? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for, for a simple reason that he's going to maintain, like I suck it out of some suck it out of catch basin. I don't think that's an issue. Okay. Did he refuse to maintain it? If why, it would he, why would he possibly refuse to maintain it? If it becomes a, a public way, the to. town is yeah, but, to, but he, but he needs to look at that and sign off it. You know, if he don't understand it, then he needs to get someone to explain, to explain it to him. To him. Sure. Not so, not really tough. I guess I have some documentation. This is the stormwater report that we yeah. uh, gave to Duset Survey or Duset Associates, and they did mm -hmm. a review of it. I pulled a small section out of it. It's a long-term operation and maintenance plan. For the whole storm oh, system. Have, have to set go over and explain to them how it works. Oh, that's sure. That, 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 that's one of the things. That's right. ADS right. right. Chicopee makes those things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. And it's a, really the way you clean that is yeah. you put a hose into it with an angled nozzle and it sprays the sediment out. Yeah, they make some monster ones down there. Yeah, they make some, <laughs> they can get pretty large. So yeah. <laughs> this, this seems to be a very thorough way in environmentally very beneficial way of getting rid of uh, the stormwater. Is this a new state regulation or is it just being very thorough on your part? Um, it's, it's us both. I mean, so, you know, when you start working with DEP, DEP really likes the subsurface systems. They, they kind yeah. of sort of push you in, into these things versus um, quote unquote um, dinosaurs, what they call us, you know, funneling every, all the stormwater to a large surface basin where you know it decentralizes i guess one can say it decentralizes the system that's why we're going with the two different options here instead of trying to get all the water to one location we kind of split it out the best location for stormwater back here was a subsurface so it just worked it worked out that way. because you know the the streets are over from the first street with kennedy all the way down i've seen the transition where the first ones just ran something into Russell Brook, right. and then as it progressed, then you had to have a detention pond that overflowed in the Russell Brook, right. and now this one is much more environmentally. Uh, and the soils are there to support it. It's that yeah. gravelly water. Same thing. Correct, material, correct. Coarse, coarse, coarse yeah. the, 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 uh, you know, the material, it's not applicable to all scenarios. Sometimes the material is too dense, does it more in this scenario. It's, it's there too. Yeah, from a side point of view, I was just watching this little house, and I, I, I want to say Medford. Somebody was putting a, uh, a garage on, and they were required to take every drop of water, and for $25,000, they had to put a system in like that with a little bit more sophisticated. Boy, that sometimes... That's getting, for a single-family home that's getting... Um, what is ADS? That's, that's, oh, it is ADS. That's a big, that's a big ask. You know. Okay. Okay. That's a big for for a single family home because yeah. you know, yeah. the regulations yeah. are usually across yeah. the street single from the uh, yeah. Camden County Jail. Yeah. The uh, how long has this system been around? Do you know? Uh, Storm Tech has been. No, no, not Storm Tech, but this design. But that design. Uh, geez, since at least I've been working since I've been designing stormwater systems, which is about 15 years now. Okay. Um, but certainly before that. Okay. This had certainly been a push to utilize under you know subsurface storage so that you're not taking away surface use you know especially in like the large parking lots you have to allocate a certain area to stormwater detention whereas now you can put that on the ground and utilize that that area for a different yeah, well, it, this is I put this the this is a great system I mean not, not that there's a great system but I'm just the idea of underground infiltration is great because it gets it out of how about this size uh, you know, it, it gets it out of the, it's, it's, it's invisible to the surface. Right, exactly. And it's nice, it's hidden, like Joe said, and it, it's, it's, it's just a very pretty yeah. system when it's done. No yeah. mosquitoes can breed that? Not easily. <coughs> Not easily. Never say never, but um, <coughs> it needs some big drainage pipes like that. Yeah, it's it's, well, it's, it's cool when you start getting into it. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly. You drive a car to some of them. That's how big they are. Yeah. So <coughs> they need a sign off from Marvel. Sign off from Marvel. I don't know anything else on the to do list. Yeah, yeah, I got a, I got a question with that. You know, uh, inclusive uh, zoning. What what does he intend to do with the one unit for 
low to moderate income housing. Where are you going to do that? So what I've, what I've spent some time looking into this and, and talking to others, but I think the, the plan, if okay with the board, would be to create an affordable rental unit. It seems like the path of least resistance and while things are unknown in terms of a fund and things like that, it's the most sure way to resolve that. So okay. um, we would take an existing multifamily property in town and just take one of the existing apartments and make it a rent affordable unit. Yeah, perfectly acceptable. Well, how do you how do you value that contribution? I believe so. In talking with um, an attorney who knows this stuff because I need help navigating it, he said that uh, like you would have to have something like the Amherst Housing Authority, that some organization uh, oversee this, and they would establish those those parameters. I guess um, so. Still more to find out, but I think at this point we've defined. If this can happen, we'd like to create that unit, one unit in town. I think we call that the Hadley Housing Authority, don't we? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they, they, want to do it. they don't want anything to do right. with it. So you, another this argument is, for the trust. Yeah, right, and would that not be available? You're going to get us in a lot of trouble. Um, so Amherst Housing Authority, he said, might be worth trying to uh, reach out to as a first step. Yeah, you, 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 can, you can use anybody from what I understand. And by no means are we experts on this. Mm -hmm. But any <laughs> anybody that can take care of this doesn't have to be the Hadley Housing Authority. It could be somebody other town that they were willing, right. or a private entity. I'm not, and a, from what I understand, Barry Roberts trying to sell a home falls into a much more difficult category than a rental property. Right. And even. Uh, Larry from PVPC has said the same thing. Not that it's easy, mm -hmm. but it's nowhere near as complex as the sale. Right. But so the advice we were given was to try to take the If you have someone independent of the Hadley Housing Authority managing it, are they going to be doing it for nothing? No. I, I believe there's some type of fee. So are you prepared to, to pay a fee in per perpetuity to them? And how are you going to do that? I think. It, it, with, yeah. the, with the rental, it's, any of that is kind of in perpetuity because you're taking a less a lesser rate forever, effectively, for that. So you compensate the, the manager. It's, it's part of, I think it's part of the rent roll. It's just part of the cost. Just putting out Jim. Oh, yes. The Hall of Halley Halley ain't going to want nothing to do with that. Right, we know that. You know, I'm on that board and we went through that bullshit already. No, yeah. They, they, they told us they don't want it to do they don't want to partake of any private entity on the rental or the sale. Now, the problem is, if you get Amherst in there, you can get the state in there. That's the way it's going to work. I, well, then you're already involved, John. Yeah, right. By default, yeah. any advertising goes statewide. Right. It doesn't stay within Hadley. Yeah. So that's that's a fact that we have to deal with. It. We just Whether we like it or not, it goes statewide. See, if you guys took care of it, then you wouldn't have to worry about it, but you guys don't want to do it. No, we took, we took a lot of words from you, and this is why we did it. Okay, how soon do you think you can come back? It's just a matter of talking to um, CPW. Okay, Jim, have we settled on the bond yet? The bond, certainly, to the new members on the board, now we ha uh, there's three or four possibilities for the bond but generally it's a restrictive covenant on all the lots so uh <coughs> and that has to be filed with us before i we, think that you said that we're going to go that, that was, was all lots would be that would be a covenant until then we release them one at a time as you want so that has to be filed before we sign off that's the, the way you want peter that's the way you want to handle um, this i understood that was that well, was he has choices. He can put gold bullion down, and uh, well, his name is then not he can put a uh, insurance <laughs> insurance bond, which we have had experience in the past that has subsequently lapsed, and we didn't know about it. And uh, or another one is a a passbook, but the town treasurer doesn't want to have the responsibility of holding your passbook. What about bitcoins? People borrow against it, so it's a more of a problem. I believe so. Okay. Is this not something that could be approved contingent on Marlowe's sign-off? I think because we got a 20-day window here, we probably should wait for Marlowe. Yeah, because what if Marlowe doesn't want to do anything with it? You know, not that he won't, we just, if, if the worst case happens, then you got to go back and how are you going to address it? Sure. Okay. 
I would suggest that that's the only outstanding issue. If you can get a letter from Marlo, you don't need to have. Yeah, you don't need to have everybody here. Yeah. You know what? I mean, Mr. Julianis can show up with a letter. You know, he doesn't even need to have you guys come back because everything else is all set. Right. Okay. This whole thing is contingent on Marlo signing off. Right. right. That's it. If Marlo signs, Mr. If, you, if he's the DPW director, Marlo Warner, if he signs off, right. you got to prove to the next meeting in two weeks. I would suspect that Marlo will not make the decision on his own. Then he'll have to go to his bosses, the select board, and then it's going to take a while. Well, again, we put them on in two weeks. Yep. If they can get the approval, great. If it's going to take longer than that, it'll be it'll take longer than that. But we're ready. Well, we certainly don't want to hinder commerce. Yeah, no, it, it, it's okay. We're good. Okay. See you in two weeks. At least this would give us in two weeks. Very good. Thank you. Thank you go. All right. Uh, public hearing for Steve Lewis Subaru. The Havoc Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, February 20, 2018, beginning at 7.15 p.m. in the Hadley Senior Center meeting room. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Steve Lewis Subaru for special permits, site plan approval, business use and aquifer, and stormwater management for temporary parking storage of new vehicles at 270 Russell Street, the parking area of Pulse Restaurant. Application and plan may be viewed at the Town Clerk's Office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, 7, February 7 and 13. So we have here, per your request, a letter from Berkshire Design Group, and also a copy of the lease in there as well on a copy of the site, the original site plan. Uh, we reached out to Berkshire Design to have them review it to make sure that the parking of the cars here didn't affect the permeability of the uh, of the stormwater and the runoff on the cars. And as you can see in the letter there, they see no uh, no change in the permeability on the, on the gravel site that's there. We're not changing anything that's there. Uh, we also have attached a copy of the lease that we signed with the property owner as well, which can be renewed after a year. We're looking for your approval to continue the parking of the cars here so we can go to the uh, select board and have our class one license uh, changed to reflect the additional cars that we need to keep to maintain the business that we're currently for doing. For all these cars, the ownership of your dealership? Yes, these are all unregistered new vehicles. There's no other dealership that's involved from no. anywhere else? No. <coughs> I'm kind of happy about you turning the cars around from the front to the rear. Yep, yep. Per your recommendation, we I, we turn those around. A few to me, it doesn't thing. look like a display, but what I certainly would like to see is some kind of a, a fence, a temporary fence. And I know you're not going to store cars there forever, mm -hmm. so it would be a temporary as long as you park between the cars and Route Nine. So to me. That'll stop the this well, light. Well, you just said that they're not going to park cars there forever. Well, the, the lease is for, for one next year. Five years, six years, seven years, ten years? You don't know. So we don't know. Quite a long time. Quite yet. Well, not forever. Well, the property is for sale. No. <laughs> and what is the limit of the cars? Uh, we're looking for approval to store uh, between 50 and 70 cars at that location. And not, never to exceed that. Uh, 70 will meet our requirement, yes. Unless you come back, you're going to Unless we come back for approval for, for more, yeah. exactly, yep. But based on what we've been doing and the travel rate of our cars that we've been having, that should that'll meet our needs that we have. I, I have no problem at all with this to help that business out and succeed in business, but I still would want to see to require some kind of a temporary fence and not something stupid looking, a nice attractive fence. So during the duration of them doing it, it takes away any display stuff. You want to make that for some kind of a motion? Yeah. You, want, you know, let's, before we make a decision here, uh, section 5.9 in our uh, zoning regulations, motor vehicle dealership proximity. And we don't know the intent. Well, we do know the intent. This was presented to the, uh, the town meeting and about eight, eight years ago. And the concern was not to have 
Route 9 looked like King Street in Northampton with all automobile dealerships and not generating any revenue because of the uh, limitations on taxing automobiles. So here's the way it reads. No class one motor vehicle dealership shall be permitted within 2.5 miles of an existing <coughs> class one motor vehicle dealership. And uh, so don't say are we, as we uh, our board are we saying this is does this bylaw pertain to this or not i read it as it's the same it's not a new bit it's the same business not another business if it was another dealer then i think that would pertain to that bylaw well it's, i i mean we don't have the people who who presented it so well, we don't know the intent. Right here, that's Subaru. They're presenting that they want this, that's all it is, is for storage. They're not selling it there, they're not displaying it. Well, I, I just wanted to bring it up. I, yeah, well, I don't have a position. I read that, Joe, but that's the way We I appreciate that, by the way. I, I, I agree you with know, yeah. John Rich on this one. Yeah. However, we have a concern. Section 12.7, you are in the aquifer. Mm -hmm. Section 12.7.2 of the aquifer, zoning bylaw, and we do not have authority to waive any of these categories. Whatever more than five non-registered motor vehicles are present upon any one lot, they shall be stored at an impervious containment area, draining from which shall be directed to an oil water solid separation system. Do you have an impervious system underneath you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That so was built as a parking lot. Yeah. But this so is the, right. but so is, it, is it impervious? So so the the way that the um, that was it's not paved, right? So, no, it's, right. it's not. It's so um, what they used what they used to put in um, that it should be. It, sh it should be included on that. If it's not, Horse. I can give you that. You know, just things they have today that they use, you know, like reclaimed uh, blacked out. And they use that instead of stone dust. So, so there's Water because kind of your, because no, the vehicles that we're talking about are not being driven. Um, you know, if they're going to be driven off the lot and they're going to be brought back are to our lot to show. Are they registered? No. No. They, no. no. These are these are our vehicle as mm -hmm. storage. But however, it was constructed as a parking lot, so therefore it was constructed to house that amount of vehicles on it that would be brought in and out. But that, was never, that was never, it was never, never constructed up. to be a storage for vehicles. No. It was constructed to be a parking lot so that yeah. exactly that, like a, like a Home Depot parking lot okay. or a Home Depot type, of, any, any customer cars come in, they park for a few hours and they leave. These cars are not there for a few hours. No, but the, so the cars that we are proposing are gonna be moved even less. But they're, old. they're going to be moved even less. They're going to be parked there until they're driven away to be test driven. But they're only going to sit there for a couple of hours? No, no. no. But, they're, but they're only going to be, if they sit there for four days, they're sitting there completely immobile for four days. They're not going back and forth all the time. We, yeah. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? However, <laughs> that's not what the zoning bylaw says. Okay. Okay. No, I think this is, this is yeah. one of those in things where we probably need some technical help. It's impervious. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. And maybe Berkshire Design, Mark Donald, can can. What is the question? Is it? The Mark Donald specifically said this letter does not represent any quantification of water quality associated with placing the new vehicles on the gravel parking surface. Good point. He's specifically excluding himself from 12.7.2 without saying it. So, the uh, 
and specifically whether it's impervious or not, it also says drainage from which shall be directed to an oil water solid separation system, which you don't have on that part. Yeah, that's only a minute. Well, I so think there's a rather jugger out here. I, I think if they get an engineer and come up with a plan for the planning board that would meet that criteria. I agree. Rather than us, right. if, if they can somehow meet that with the drainage, with the, with the parking area there, I have no problem. I'm not saying you've got a black top it. Right. Maybe right. there is something you could put down as a temporary thing underneath right. it. They okay. put that, they what, put that, I know. The part that, that I'm not sure on is that, because in the letter here, it, he states that there's no change in the permit of, the permeability of that lot. That's correct. So if there's no change, what, I'm not, I'm not clear what we're trying to do. But you're in the aquifer recharge area. You're in the aquifer recharge area. Mm -hmm. he's, he's saying there's no change in the permeability. Mm -hmm. He's not saying what the permeability is. It is either impermeable or it is not impermeable. He's not making any any statement as to what it is. He's just saying there's no change. So if it's impermeable, if he if for some reason that lot is impermeable, you may be all set except maybe for a drainage basin. If it is impermeable, if it's not impermeable, then what can you do to meet that criteria? See, I think the question that we addressed when we first got into this was if you are taking an open field, an open parking area, and you're putting 70 cars on it, that is increasing the impermeability to some extent. If it rains now, it's like putting it's like putting a, a big concrete pad down because the water goes off of the car yeah. somewhere. Yeah. It, so that was that was my my first concern. Why we wanted some something on the drainage was what is the effect of drainage of putting you you have gra ground there now and you're putting steel there. How is that going to affect drainage? You know. What so the the answer that they gave is we thought about that when we designed it originally. It's right. not going to be an issue. Fine. Right. That's which we can all assume based on that it was built as a parking lot and approved as a right. parking lot. Right. But that is completely different than the uh, yeah. aquifer protection mm -hmm. section of the bylaw, which specifically addresses unregistered vehicles. Um, <clears throat> which probably was referring to vehicles that were going to be parked there for period of time. Yeah, and I'm guessing junks too. Yeah, well, <laughs> and there, there are exceptions right. for uh, right. construction vehicles, farm vehicles, and uses lawfully in existence as the, of the effective right. date of this bylaw. But um, I think it's pretty safe to say that the new vehicles with you know, no leaks, no, you know, not being stored there, not junks piling up, that it's uh, not so, what they were going after on that. You know, I look at it when the, when the rain comes down with a car is there. Same amount of water sitting there. It's around. the same amount of water if it lands on a car or lands is all the ground around it. So cars have drains that I can the I can see them. them putting hard pack down and running into a manhole while you just you know because that thing's all slow and that would cover it because I know people that use hard pack and in the water it's it's like black blacktop. It's reclaimed blacktop ground. And it comes down. It's you put a thin coat right on a whole yard, mm -hmm. and that would take care of it. But again, I can't see what the heck's the difference between rain just falling down. If there's a car, it falls down. A car runs out. It's the same right. displacement of water. Still the same amount of water. You know, there's no more water. Oh, no, I'm not saying there's no more water. That's, that's fine, that, and that's what yeah. it, that's what Berkshire Design is confirmed. So that that right. part's. That part's settled, but mm -hmm. what we have is the 12.7.2. Uh, so you need Mark to address the 12.7.2. I think we need, to, we, we need to address that somehow. You know, what, what can, how can between you and he address that mm -hmm. with something, okay? Um, because last thing you want to do is, you know, oops. Right. So the, the challenge that we face is our, the town, the select board has our class one license is only approved through the end of February throughout this these proceedings. 
So we have uh, a short period of time that is a major bomb for us. And I, and I would be willing to bet if you go to them with the concerns that we're having, they will give you an extension. They've okay. extended it so many times already. Sure. You're working in good faith with the town to address the problem. Right. Okay, you're not resisting. Yeah. We are unfortunately, we threw a lump in front of you today, or a bump in front of you, sure. that we probably should have given you at the last time you were in. I didn't think of it until after you had left, and I said, well, you know, how does this really affect? Fair enough. Okay. So other than, other than meeting that criteria, is everything else? Well, so that's good, good, John good point. had asked about screening. I would okay. like, I see in your lease, you we have the have, option yes. to install shrubbery. Yes. Um, we got that approved by the owner of the Pulse because as, as a business owner there, I wouldn't want my tenant putting up a fence and blocking visibility of my new business that we wanted to do, but the, they did approve shrubbery because of the The look fence of it. does not have to be any higher than the, the roof of a car. It's not, not a real big stockade fence. Yeah, it was a concern of theirs, but they did approve shrubbery not to exceed a certain height. They'll do uh, the same thing. Okay. Yeah. That's so are you... Is that what you're proposing to put in shrubbery? Uh, Only if necessary, yes. David, we were hoping to meet your, you know, okay. as you talked about turning the cars around, moving them to the back of the lot. I think we all agree that it's clearly visible that that is not a retail, and nor are we doing it to gain, you know, uh, frontage by any stretch of the imagination. But so, yeah. there's been so many complaints. I mean, people have told me, what are they doing? Doing another car lot there? And a well, lot of people, these hearings are a lot of people responded yeah. well. At least they turned them around, so they're not, yeah. it doesn't look like they're displaying them. There. Right, and, and these that, these hearings and, and with the that, publicized that it is the storage lot, so they'll you know, the local folks will understand what we're trying to accomplish today. Right, right. right the shrubs right. are not ideal for the business, I will say, you know, and they are one to accommodate because they're trying to help us as well. Um, but, so you uh, mean to say that the owner will not allow you to put up tent, like? No, he will allow us to put up shrubs to a certain height. But temporary low. Yeah, they were not. They weren't fence. crazy about it, but they'll allow it if it's required. Come back with a couple of options. Right. This side, of, you know, that's took him 15 years to resolve the thing uh, just west of you where that junkyard used to be. Yep. Putting signs there. Yep. But come either shrubbery or some kind of temporary thing. And the other thing I think we as a board have to figure out is there going to be a time limitation. Your lease is for one year to be renewed. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll have to consider that too when you come back. Does, does the uh, owner of the uh, health food vegan restaurant find any irony that he's getting income from a car dealership? <laughs> no, our, cli our, our clients are the same as their clients actually. We share a very a similar of, client. A yeah, a lot of Subarus in their parking lot. So. Um, you know, very health conscious uh, our clients are as, as our parents. Now, does the Chinese Immersion School use that as a uh, drop off for kids and pick them up with a bus? Yes, I don't know the how often that is, but I know it's been used as a drop off. Okay, so here's another question I have. There's going to be have to be some coordination there. Well, that's the owner's responsibility. Yeah, I don't think we have to be so, no, Yeah, no, that's yeah. We'll sort of what does Subaru, Subaru do above and beyond for this community? Uh, well, we've done quite a bit. Um, you know, we, starting with the the Hadley PTA, uh, we raised uh, about thirty thousand dollars through the Subaru Share the Love program for the uh, for the PTA. Uh, the following year, we raised forty five thousand for the Hadley Helping Hearts organization. Mm -hmm. So all the money we've helped raise has gone back into the school systems. Last year, we donated thousands of dollars of books to the high school to the high school library as well. And we're also getting involved in uh, working with the town on, on a new project that they're doing behind. Hopkins Academy as well, help them raise money for that as well. Well, I applaud you for that. I think that's very helpful, that. and I think the town depends on you kind of folks to yeah. help them out. Yep. So I certainly appreciate yep. that. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. So you'll um, talk to Mark Arnold about the aquifer, 12.7.2, mm -hmm. yep. and maybe come up with some samples of plantings. Mm -hmm. Or, or fencing, or whatever you yeah. gotta do. Some samples of screenings. Okay. okay. The, um, so the only question I have for you is for regarding the screening, just so we don't have to go into another where we need more time again. Where we currently have the cars parked and where we have agreed that this is the space that we will occupy, uh, per your recommendation, is move further back from the road. Yes. The most ideal point for screening would be closest to the road where it's already kind of broken up land just over the guardrail. That would be the more ideal. I just I want to meet your needs, so I don't want to have 
because you go right through the middle of their parking lot and we put temporary shrubs there. It, I'm just want to make sure it looks good. You know. we, we want to somehow screen. Right. And so, you know, it, it's a commercial district. I'm not worried about the cars being visible. Uh, you just want them to be not on display. Yeah. Well, the way I look at it, if there's not a barrier of whether it's shrubs or a temporary fence, it looks like a display. With that there, it takes the display thing right out the window. Yeah. I mean, you'll never hide them 100%. Right. right. You don't have to. You know, all, we're, all we're asking to do is... My question is, is moving them further back away from the road and putting up a line of shrubs, does that draw more attention? So should we then look at bringing them back closer to the road to put up the shrubs where I think it might be more hidden? It's what what the owner of the property will yeah. work for them. He's, he's okay. He, coincidentally, what you what had actually upset some folks is when we turned around and put them on the road was actually based on his recommendation. He says, I think this will look a lot better. If, I said, well, yeah, that's so what well, if, if, if putting you know, the shrubs will. along the front of the property. That'll be a lot more pleasing in my opinion. I agree. As yeah. opposed to the middle of the parking lot, it's going to look kind of strange. Yes. And moving the cars up closer where they're literally behind the shrubs, because if, to be honest, I agree with you. If, if you put the shrubs on Route 9, you start Route tent. 9, <laughs> and you have the cars sitting 150 feet back, <laughs> it's impossible to hide them. Yeah, the broke ground slopes out. You're, you're right. just, okay. yeah, we're just Whereas if you do, now if you move them back closer, they may be more likely to be hidden. To be shielded, right. Okay. So, I don't know how much trouble it would be. I suspect Berkshire Design could probably do some pretty, be mobile. pretty simple yeah, line be mobile, drawings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, 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 that might be a simple, no, nothing fancy. Yeah. You know, yeah. just this is shrubs here, cars here. Shrubs, same place, cars further back. Mm -hmm. What does it look like? But I think you're right. They're gonna, everything's going to be appear much more hidden not but closer it, but right. if it is shrubs uh, i would think it would be green shrubs 12 months of the year not yes some kind of we, we're suggesting that as well oh, yeah. the well, ones that are easy to the, easy to manicure and they're green year round yeah, ever green, green, ever green, green, ever green, whatever they yes. might be yes that's what we're suggesting okay. yep okay. if you put in something like arbor vitae just remember yeah you're going to do trimming every year. Work. Yeah. Once, <laughs> once they once they get established they're like weeds yeah, yeah. and they'll grow Oh. Okay. So, uh, so we need to meet with the to see the select board then as far as the approval for extension. That's or what, what, that what, that what happened at the planning board. Yeah. Like, what, whatever you need to do for the class one. I suspect yeah. you'll find that at least one or two members or three of the select board are, are watching. <laughs> so, <laughs> fair enough. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate Good luck. It. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we meet obviously first, first and third Tuesday, so um, you can. Good question. We need to schedule you when you want to come back. Okay. Do you think you could be back in two weeks? Absolutely, please. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> March 6th, we'll put you on the agenda. March 6th? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions in the audience, buddy, can for that. I think you're here for something else. Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The planning commission can't make it March 6th, but they're coming on the 20th, so we have right. three up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What was the next one? What else do? Um, I'm assuming you're here for something. I looked at your agenda, and under other, it says coordination of site plan. So I thought I oh, those are just in case somebody comes in to talk about it. Well, yes. That's actually a discussion we're going to have about okay. well, what so we I learned from that that plan? Yeah, well, what we learned from two weeks ago was that apparently the owner's project managers are not talking to each other. So um, um, they need to. They need to. We need a community for a plan, like I said, that shows everything. And until we see that, until I see that, I certainly can't make any 
decisions or other, anything else. Yeah, this is not, not absolutely yeah, correct. This is not to make a decision. This is just no to talk yeah. about this. What we, uh, when we are dealing with a large project like Home Depot, we want to, we ask them to prepare a plan that shows build out. So I think that until we have a common plan of the library and the senior center, I don't think we can. I don't think and we can see that either. And, and the, the old library. library well, we need to know what's going to happen to the old library. Right. And what's the problem? In other words, if it's going to be idle, it's idle. If it's going to become <coughs> something else, is it going to be torn down? What's going to happen to the old library? It's going to become a meetings you know, one of the things I've heard from the second is what well, might be a meeting center for the planning board. Mm -hmm. If it is, where's the parking for it? The parking for that needs to be someplace and likely place is on this parcel. And you know, um, so what's going to happen to the old library? That is a, is a question that you don't need to answer. The select board will but the select board that. needs to answer and if you would, in some way, shape, or form, it might need to be incorporated into the plan of the library and senior center. We are aware of that, and we are just last week, they finally, the library has not had an architect or an OPM on board. Okay. They hired the OPM last week, and the architect is being hired this week. Okay. And we are already scheduled to meet with them and work starting next week. Okay. Okay, so that's all moving forward. That's good. Okay. Is that to your, want to make your motion again about your sign sheet? No. Okay. You guys are just too stubborn. <laughs> I'm willing to discuss it. Okay. Don't have any minutes. Don't have any good no bills. No bills, correspondence. Future topic? Um, about conflicts. Um, I got a call into the State Ethics Commission, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of State's office. After that other, well, there wasn't a hearing or nothing. But <clears throat> I know uh, uh, Joseph Roddick, uh, he's a member of the Legion, and nobody in this board wants to get any kind of problems. And I just want to say, if in need, I'm going to resign off this board and advocate for the American Legion, our veterans. And I will do that if, uh, if it's so needed. Uh, I'm just sick and tired of this whole town doing things the way they're doing, not thorough, not presenting all the information, coming to this board with basically nothing and this thing is for the future of this community and I can't participate if there's full of misleading information and not information so everybody in this town understand what the effects and what we're doing for the next generation. Okay. And I, I'm really, you guys, I'm serious enough to leave this board early to do what I have to do for the veterans of this community. So we're setting future discussion topics. We're obviously not discussing anything right. tonight. Right. I'm just concerned that this wasn't talked about at town meeting because I think if some of these issues had appeared during town meeting or even were divulged prior to town meeting, well, we could, the, we the could, nature of the vote might have changed. We can talk about that at some point in the future. This yeah. Is, the, yeah, I mean, this, this Agenda item is to set future topics, not to discuss but them. I want to set this for conflicts with what's on the horizon. Well, 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 the future so topics. none of us, no, you, me, you, 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 or Joe, get in, into any kind of conflicts or problems. All of us want to do the right thing for the town. It's how we get there. Okay. Right. Yes. Got nothing else. That's it. So, um, right. Okay. Anything else? No, I think I've said enough. Motion to adjourn? So move it. Second. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Let's go straight from the back.